So you want to know how to add batteries to a solar power system. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you the method used to retrofit battery storage to an existing solar power system so that you can have emergency backup power or maximize your self-consumption. All right, so in today's video, we're talking about how do you add battery storage to an existing solar power system. Uh, and the way that you do it is a technique called AC coupling. Now, when you talk about solar and battery storage systems, there's two main architectures. There is a DC coupled system or there's an AC coupled system. And when we talk about DC coupled or AC coupled, really all we're talking about is where does the interface happen between the solar system and the battery system? Does it happen on the DC side of the system, the direct current side, before the energy flows through an inverter? Or does it happen on the AC side of the system, after the direct current electricity coming off the solar panels has already been inverted to AC alternating current electricity? Now, you're gonna find that there's arguments and pros and cons of each architecture, but the basics of it are this. Since battery cells and since solar cells are both natively DC electrical devices, they're more efficient when they charge and discharge in their native format, which is direct current. So a DC coupled system is generally gonna give you more efficient solar to battery charging, uh, as well as battery to loads. If you have any DC loads that are directly connected to your battery, you're generally gonna get more efficient performance that way meaning of the energy that you put into the, the battery to charge it, you'll be able to get more of it out. Or the more of the energy that you, you get directly coming off your solar panels, more of that in a percentage basis, more of that will actually get successfully captured and charged in the battery. However, the downside with the DC coupled system is generally you have to plan for that on day one. So you have to make that physical connection between the solar system and the battery bus uh, at the time of the original solar installation. Now, on the other hand, with the AC coupled system, the advantage is that it's much easier to wire, especially if you're coming in after the fact to add batteries to an existing solar power system. And the reason is very simply, uh, to install an AC coupled battery backup, all of that wiring happens at on the AC side of the system or at the AC circuit breaker panel. So if you already have existing solar on your roof, you don't really have to get on the roof and change anything up there. You can keep your solar panels, you can keep your solar inverter that you already have and just add in some wiring and some switching on the AC side of the system to add your battery backup. Now, the way AC coupling works when the grid goes down is there's typically some sort of a transfer switch. Now in this example, we're looking at the Franklin whole home battery system. Uh, and by the way, this is a great time for me to introduce today's video sponsor, Franklin whole home battery, which is my preferred whole home battery retrofit solution. And so the switching happens at their transfer switch called the A gate. And so if the utility service ever were to go down, the A gate has the ability to disconnect from the utility grid start drawing from the batteries, in this example, the Franklin A-Power batteries, and then actually send its own signal to the solar inverter to wake the solar inverter back up. Now, basically what this is doing is it's tricking the solar inverter into thinking that it is the electric grid. You see the, the solar inverters, or if you have micro inverters on your solar panels, they don't really know where the electricity that they're seeing is coming from could be coming from the electric grid, could be coming from a, a backup generator, uh, or it could be coming from a battery that has its own inverter and can send its own signal to wake those, uh, those grid tie inverters up. But those inverters don't know where the electricity is coming from. All they know is, hey, is the voltage in the appropriate range? Is the frequency in the appropriate range? Okay, if the power source looks stable, let's go ahead and push in whatever power that we can. Now, when the grid is operational, that's fine because the solar inverters are supposed to do that. They're supposed to just push out as much power as they can. The home, the home could uh, absorb the power first, but whatever the home can't take would then just get pushed back out to the electric meter and sold back to the power company for credits. But if you're in a grid down situation, that doesn't necessarily work very well because let's say for example, 
the electrical signal coming into the house is from a, a fuel burning standby generator, well, you don't necessarily want excess solar being pushed back out into a generator. You could actually damage your generator doing that. Uh, and then similarly, when you're running on a battery backup mode, the battery can accept some amount of solar back feeding into it to charge it, but the battery has a limit of how much charge can come in, right? So the battery has a power limit, how much it can put out to loads within the house. It also has a power limit of how much energy it can take back in. And so in this case, the transfer switch or the A gate, is, its job is, is to play traffic cop, so to speak, with the different electric flows to make sure that too much power is not going into the battery, to make sure that power is not accidentally being backfed into a backup generator, uh, but still to allow the solar inverters to contribute as much as they can, whether we're in a grid, uh, grid up or a grid down mode. Now again, the advantage with the AC coupled system is all the wiring can be done on the AC side of the system, which is typically at ground level. So if you're looking at adding battery storage to an existing solar power system, chances are you're going to be using an AC coupled design. Now with the Franklin system, not only do you get high power rating and high storage capacity, but you also get a generator integration option which is excellent for those of you who really want maximum redundancy, having solar with batteries backing up the solar, but then having a third level option of, of optionally being able to run a fuel burning generator. And if the generator is running, use that to power the house and recharge the batteries simultaneously. And also including smart circuit load control. And so this is one of those ingredients that really does make for a successful whole home battery backup implementation is by using some form of intelligent load control so that when you are running in a backup power mode and particularly when it's, when it's evening hours, when you're running off of the battery only, you don't necessarily have a lot of solar coming in. There are certain high draw non-essential items that you may not want running drawing your battery down. So think things like electric vehicle chargers, pool pumps, or air conditioning units. You may wanna make very limited use of these items, or you may not wanna use them at all when you're running on backup power so that you can stretch your battery life for keeping critical items on, like your refrigerator or maybe your, your home medical equipment. So this has been a brief discussion of how to add battery backup to an existing solar power system. Again, it's called AC coupling, and in most cases it can be done 100% at ground level without having to rewire your existing solar panel or inverters. Well folks, as always, if you're getting good value from the videos that you watch here on Solar Surge, make sure you hit that thumbs up button uh, and go ahead and hit the subscribe button as well if you haven't done so already. Uh, that way as we have new videos like this coming out, it'll come up on your homepage and on your feed so you can stay up to date with us. Uh, of course, if you're a homeowner, if you're looking at solar and battery storage options for your home, uh, if you need to get a price quote, or maybe if you already have a price quote and you need to get a comparison quote to make sure that you're getting the right equipment or getting the best deal, uh, as always, you can feel free to reach out to us on the link below there, uh, set up a call with a solar expert, or just use our free online calculator tool to find out how much solar and battery storage will cost in your area. Well, that does it for today's video. I thank you all for spending some more time with Solar Surge. And as always, I'm Joe Ordia here, encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video.